This video will cover some operational aspects of our studio, getting uh, a session up and running, configuring the interface. Uh, we've already done some of this in class, but wanted to provide an additional review video for those uh, that might find it helpful. So here is a generic uh, RStudio session. We have reconfigured the panes in class uh, to facilitate being able to kind of do demonstrations. So uh, the first thing I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and open um, a script window here. So if I click on this uh, little green arrow, I can also go to File and say New R Script. And so now I see my four pane layout. It won't generally open a script uh, window unless there's a script uh, open or you're started a new script. So uh, a lot of the configuration in RStudio happens on the Tools menu under Options. So if we come in here, uh, we'll see a couple of things. One, in the R General tab, you can see the version of R that RStudio is interfacing with, and you can change that if you need to. There's also a default working directory. The tilde is, uh, represents the home directory where RStudio is installed. It's fine to leave it there. You can also change that. So uh, oftentimes it'll be convenient to put something on your desktop. If you're in Windows, um, I'm just going to call this 241R uh, folder. And I'm going to select that folder. And now that now becomes my working directory where R will kind of default to uh, when I save things. Now there's a number of other things here that I want to just briefly mention. They're not critical for what we're doing, but uh, notice there's a checkbox for restore most recently open project at startup. Now th these are all optional configurations that um, you know you can set to your preference. Um, if we leave this clicked, that means whatever we're doing in our studio, when we close it, it'll bring that back up when we reopen it. For class purposes, that may be a bit confusing because usually we're starting a new script file uh, when we have a class session. So we can go ahead and unclick that. Um, restore .r data into workspace at startup. So this will restore your um, objects, your data objects that are in your workspace. Um, we can also get rid of that because we don't need that. It also, we can say, do you want to save the workspace? And so what that means is um, anything that has any variables or functions that are loaded up in your workspace, like data sets, this option allows you to save that, the state of those objects when you exit our studio so that it will bring it back um, when you start up. And again, Asking is not a bad setting, or you can also put never, because again, we're usually starting from scratch. So we'll, we'll set this to never for now. Always save history. Uh, that's um, basically it saves the list of all commands you type into the RStudio interface. And again, we don't need to save that. Um, the, and then removing duplicate entries kind of condenses your history. If you type the same command multiple times, it'll save one instance of those commands. Um, and that's just a, a documentation trail of what you've done while in RStudio. And again, for class purposes, we really don't need a lot of this. So there's other things you can, uh, lots of other uh, tabs here. Um, the Appearance tab is one where you can change the theme uh, to uh, whatever uh, scheme you like, but uh, I generally prefer the default one. Now pane layout, this is something we've done in class. This allows you to configure where the different panes show up. So if you want to move uh, your console up to the right side like uh, we have generally done in class, just use the Dropbox and it'll automatically reor reorganize the panes and uh, this is generally the layout we use with source or script files in the upper left, console in the upper right, workspace below on the left, and files, plots, packages, etc. on the right. So we can click uh, apply there just to apply that and you can see in the background it's already reorganized. I want to also cover packages. Um, as we've discussed, packages are uh, different uh, collections of functions in R that do specific types of analyses. There's a bunch of default packages that come with R. Uh, we can load additional ones and you need to establish a, a CRAN mirror. This is the repository of uh, packages. Now when uh, in the older versions of our studio they didn't set a CRAN mirror which is a download but now they usually when you you should see global CDN our studio you can change this to a geographically uh, more closer location where you are. Uh, for example if you're at BCRI 
you could um, change it to uh, the University of Sao Paulo. Uh, if you're at the NIH or even uh, in at Duke, we often use um, the Statlib or the uh, Hubli Classifieds. Uh, any of those are fine. You can also just leave it on the default, but that's what those are. And that's all we really need to cover here. So we're going to click OK. So now let's go ahead and um, talk about panes for a second. If you want to see all four panes, that's the default. If you want to um, collapse panes, you can use these little buttons up here. This one will shrink the pane you're in. This one will expand it. So this will expand it down and put workspace down here if we don't need to see it and we want a lot of screen space for our source or script file. You can click this to return it to where it was. Same thing over here. Okay. So let's go ahead and go to the website and download um, one of the files we used on Module 2 Day 2. This was a script file we used to introduce you to our studio. So I'm going to I've already downloaded it here. I've clicked it. So I'm going to go to, let's see if it's in my, uh, let's download it one more time. And let's show it in folder. Okay, so it's in my download folder. It's associated uh, with our studio. Now, depending on how you've installed our studio, your file associations may or may not be how you want them. Um, if I double click this in Windows Explorer, it should open up our studio or open up in our studio, which it does. Let me minimize this for a second. If you're, if you're working on Mac OS, the file association of with a .r file may be with R instead of RStudio. And if you use the zip version of R, you didn't do a full install on Windows, then Windows may not know what to do with a .r file. On the Windows side, you just go to Properties, and you can change what um, the program opens with here. You can browse to wherever you've installed RStudio and look within the I'll show you real quick. If you go to the RStudio folder wherever you unzipped it, you go into the bin folder and you find the RStudio.exe and you associate the .r file with that. Then it'll know that when you double click that to open it up. On the OS, Mac OS side, if your R scripts are associated with R, you can go to the get info and change, essentially do the same thing. You can change it to RStudio there. All right, so let's go back to our studio quickly. And so now we've opened up our script file. We can extend things open here so we can see what we're doing. And again, for when we're working with scripts, you can put uh, type code directly into the console uh, if you want to, but it's generally convenient to work with script file because you can save these and they're organized syntactical files that contain all the commands you need. Generally, most files that we give you will start out with uh, a download statement that goes out to our course website and automatically downloads and then loads up whatever data we want to use. So in order to execute a script file, the easiest thing to do is to just highlight and click Run. That will move the code into the console and execute it. Okay. We notice that we've downloaded the Site18 data. It showed up down here in our workspace. As before, we can click it and we can actually see the data. We can tab back to, we can actually close this untitled one. We can tab back and forth between the different uh, views of our data and our script file here. Uh, if we want to look at the structure of this, we simply highlight this line, run it, and we get our execution in the console. If we go down a little further, um, here we go, we have some histograms. Let's actually do a histogram and run that. And we'll get a histogram in our plots window. As we've uh, discussed before, if you want to um, move that to uh, Word or something else, you can either save it as an image file, or if you just do copy plot to clipboard, it'll bring up this nice window where you can choose uh, how you want to um, the size that you want this image to be, and then you can just simply copy the plot, go over to Word and paste it, and you will get an image, uh, plot image in your uh, file. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention, you'll notice sometimes that um, when we're doing uh, demonstrations in class, you won't see us hit the Run button. There's a shortcut. If you highlight something and press Control-Enter, 
uh, that will execute code uh, the same as hitting the run button. When running a script file, one of the most common things that will generate errors is running things out of sequence. Usually it is the case that you need to sequentially run all of the code in a file. That's not always the case here. Um, once you download and load the file, most of the commands will run. But notice down here, this uh, subset command, remember that the green with things that start with a pound sign are considered comments and will be ignored by RStudio when it executes code. So you can execute comments and those will be ignored. Only things that don't proceed, that are not preceded by a, a pound sign will be executed. But here is where we create two, uh, a treatment and a control group. And so anything that involves those will need to be, um, so for example here, if you run this command without subsetting the data, you'll get an error. So you, you need to sequentially, once you run the creation of this new variable, now you will get a mean. Anyhow, that's all really wanted to do for this video. Um, we'll have some additional videos that actually walk through some of the script files that we've done.